Topaz Photo AI gets a new update. This is version 0.9 of the early access version. Now there's raw support via Lightroom. You can batch process raw files right out of Lightroom. Let's check it out. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I'm looking at version 0.9 of the early access version of Topaz Photo AI. They've added support for RAW files via Lightroom, via the File Plugin Extras menu. This is good news. This means we can now batch process images right out of Lightroom, which is pretty exciting. And I'll show you how that works today. I've chosen three flower images. Now you can choose as many, I believe, as you want. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I would assume so. I haven't tested that theory, but here we go. Here are three flower images. These are all raw files. The first image is a DNG. The second image is a DNG, and the third image is a CR2. So it works with either CR2, regular raw files, or any type of a raw file, as well as DNG files. So whatever your camera has, it should work, whether you convert to DNG or not. Before we get started, if you watched my last video about version 0.8, remember it had those basic raw adjustments in it. They've taken that out. They weren't feeling that was something that was working very well. As you know from my video, it was not working well at all. It was super slow. So they've decided to get rid of that for now. Who knows, they might bring it back in the future. Personally, for myself, I didn't see a real need for that, being the fact that I process my images with Lightroom and Photoshop. Let me know in the comments section below if you're happy with their decision to get rid of the basic adjustments. And uh, please leave comments and questions about anything. I really love to hear from you. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and click that notification icon. And also, please like and share. That really helps me to grow this YouTube channel. You know it's all about that algorithm with YouTube, and I appreciate it when you do that. Also, if you own Denoise, Sharpen, and Gigapixel with up-to-date licenses, Photo AI is a free download for you, so go ahead and grab it. If you don't own any of the software yet, click on my affiliate link in the description below and you can save money when you buy the image quality bundle. You get all three pieces of software. And also, if you own one or two pieces, you can complete that bundle by clicking on this image quality bundle offer as well. And when you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission and that helps support this YouTube channel. So I appreciate it whenever you do that. Thank you very much. Now let's check out this new update version 0.9 and see what this Lightroom raw support is all about. Let's come up here to file in the menu system of Lightroom. And what we need to do is come down to plugin extras. Now I have a bunch of plugin extras in here, but if I come the whole way down to the bottom, you're gonna see I have process with photo AI. But before I click that, you'll notice I have all three of these images selected. Now, if you don't, you could do a command or a control A to select all your images, or you could command control click on one or more images. For instance, if I wanted this image, I'll command or control click this one and say, I want this one. But then I decide, hey, I want this one too. Now, of course, I could have just done a command A and got them all, but you have choices here. So remember, command or control A to get them all, or you can command or control click on each individual image that you choose to do the batch processing with. Okay, then I'm gonna do all three. So let me come up here to file. Let's go to plugin extras and process with photo AI. And it's gonna ask me, do you want to edit a copy? Do you want to edit the original? So you have a choice here or you could cancel. I'm going to edit a copy because I don't want to mess with my original file. So I want to do a copy. Now I don't have any adjustments on any of these images. So they're all just right out of the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit a copy and that'll open up photo AI and then we'll get started. And here we are inside of Photo AI version 0.9.0. Now you'll notice this thumbnail is not showing. It's for this image here. That's a bug. So I just want to point that out right away. Remember, we're in beta here. Hopefully that'll get corrected soon. And also you notice I have a thumbnail here with nothing on it. And I only had three images. And over here it says save four images to Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now that's a problem. 
So right off the bat, this one right here, I'm going to click on the three dots and close this image because that is not an image. And I think that'll give me an issue when I go to send this back to Lightroom. Now it says save three images. So very interesting. Let me know in the comment section below if you're experiencing these kind of issues too. I'd really like to know about it. Now here's another problem. You'll notice that these first two images show autopilot. You see that autopilot, autopilot? This one says sharpen, so it's not getting an autopilot setting. So if we look up here, we don't see any updates. For instance, if I click on this image after it updates itself, you'll notice autopilot showing me all the different issues with this image. Subject detected, subject is out of focus, image noise level is low. But now let's click on this image and it's not giving me the auto settings. But now that I've clicked on it again, it is. So that's another bug. So very interesting. Again, let me know in the comments section if you're experiencing these type of problems. I'm sure Topaz would like to know. And now when I hover over the images, this is showing me sharpen lens blur 36%. This one says sharpen lens blur 31%. And this one says sharpen lens blur 28%. Let's click on our first image and do some analyzing. Autopilot tells us we're using raw image data. The subject's detected, and if I hover right here, you can see there's the subject. The subject is out of focus, and the image noise level is low. Let me go ahead and zoom in to, say, 200%, and give it a chance to update here. It's updated, and as you can see, it's removed the noise. However, it doesn't show any noise being removed here but the noise is removed and I think it looks pretty good. I moved it a little bit so it's got to update again. Here's the before and here's the after. So I'm happy with that one. I just don't understand why that doesn't show that it's turned on because it has removed noise. Let's go to the next image and see what we get. Let's give it a chance to update itself. And we have this rose and it is done and it says, subject detected and you can see there's the rose and the subject is out of focus and the image noise level is low now let's zoom into 200 percent and see what we got on this image we'll give it a chance to update itself now on this one i do see noise right here the image is sharper if i left click with my mouse and hold it down there's the before and there is the after so the image is sharper but i have this noise here and as you can see here it's telling me image noise level low it is low noise but there still is a lot of color noise in there so let's go ahead and toggle this on and see what happens after it updates itself so it's removing the noise and now it's sharp it's going to sharpen itself here in a sec we'll just wait and now here we go now here is the before and here's the after now it is sharp and the noise has been remo removed now you can go ahead and adjust these adjustments if you want i think it looks pretty good it's updating itself again because I moved something there. Okay, but it's on a one, which I think is fine because it was pretty low noise. Now I'm gonna move up into this part of the image and see what we get here. Let's let it update itself and see how things are looking. I do recommend that you inspect your image to make sure everything is good because we're, we're editing and we want a good job here. So I recommend that you always analyze your images. Don't take the software's word for it check it out for yourself but i think it's good let's look down here one time just to verify that everything looks good down here and we're not getting any kind of weird artifacts or things of that nature we want to make sure we have a nice clean image that is sharp and that looks good now let's look at our last image and see what we get with this last image now we don't see the thumbnail but we see it's this flower right here okay so subjects detected and there it is and the subject is out of focus the image noise level is low. Let me go ahead and zoom into 200%. Now it's gonna to have to update. And let's see if it removes the noise on this one. No, see the noise is not removed. It should be, right? If you're having these issues, let me know in the comments section below. I'm sure Topaz would love to hear any bugs that are appearing. So let's go ahead and toggle this remove noise on. And now it's at a two, so it's detecting that amount of noise level. So let's let it go ahead and update itself, and we're going to see the result. Now that noise is gone. Let me go ahead and zoom in to, say, 400% so we can really see. Let me move into an area where hopefully you can clearly see that noise right there. 
Now it's updating. It updates a little bit faster when you go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so here we go. So here is the before. I'm just left clicking and holding down with my mouse. Now you have like the split screen that you can pull up here and drag this across and see the difference. And then you have a side-by-side -side view that you can use if you want. But I like to use a single view and just left click and hold with my mouse. So there you go. There's before. I'm going to release my left mouse click and here's the after. Okay, let me go back out to a 100%. Again, look around your image. I'm not going to take the time right now, but I highly recommend that you do that. It's going and updating itself. So we'll just give it a second or two. It takes longer, like I said, when you're at a lower magnification. But that looks really good. Okay, so again, I don't understand why this was shut off. And it did not remove noise. So I had to actually turn that on. If I wouldn't have... I would not have been a happy camper once I got back into Lightroom Classic. Now, all I need to do is click here, save three images to Adobe Lightroom Classic, and now it's going to batch them out, and I'll see you back in Lightroom. Now we're back in Lightroom. I'm in the XY comparison mode. The image on the left is the original RAW file. The image on the right is what came back from Photo AI. Now, you'll notice the colors are a little bit off. I think the colors are close. This image is lighter. I find that the photo AI images seem to be a little lighter and the colors aren't shifting quite as much, but the image on the right looks remarkably better than the image on the left. Now, again, there's no adjustments on either one of these images. Now, let me go ahead and zoom into 100% and hopefully you can see that noise on there and there's no noise on this image and it's very sharp and it looks good. The color is slightly off I must say I'm not going to kid you but I do think it looks good now let's compare the next image the rose now these look a little bit closer in value as far as color I think the color is not really shifted the image on the right is slightly lighter let's go ahead and zoom into 100% and look around here and this was shot at ISO 1000 so not a lot of noise but we have no noise in the right and the image on the right is definitely sharper and we can see the image on the left is not quite as sharp and there is some noise in there but pretty good result on that one now let's go to the last image let me zoom out now the color shifting here is negligible i don't really see much color shifting and this time the image on the right which is the photo ai image seems slightly maybe slightly darker Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and zoom in. But no noise and definitely sharper. And let me even go into 200% on this one. Again, this is only ISO 400, but you can see noise here, but you don't see any noise here. But this one is slightly darker. But all in all, I think Topaz are going in the right direction. It's not 100% there yet, and I hope they get this stuff fixed before release, but we were never able to batch process right out of Lightroom using plugin extras. Now we can, so this is a big move in the right direction. Let me know in the comments section below what you think. Do you Are you happy with this new update? And let me know of any kind of bugs that you're getting. Let's, let's get a dialogue going and let Topaz Labs know what kind of results you're getting. Give them your feedback. This is the only way the product gets better. You got to let Topaz know. So go to topazlabs.com and click on account. It's important that you sign in. So put your email and your password for Topaz Labs and then click on my products and then go to Topaz Photo AI and see right here where it says latest version 0.9.0. Click right here. And this will take you to the product release page. This is where you can download the product and so on and so forth. And it tells you about all the changes. But there's also a reply here. So you can click reply and then just give the feedback right there. So that's important. So they'll get that information. Well, there it is, everyone. This was a first look at version 0.9. Now we can do batch processing right out of Lightroom through plugin extras. It's a big change a welcome change let me know in the comment section below again what you think about it leave your feedback of any bug reports to topaz labs just like i showed you how to do it if you enjoyed this tutorial today please give it a like share it with your friends and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel please subscribe 
Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.